Bon, j'ai pris l'initiative de suivre Vincent Garel. Il est dans une boîte. Vous le retrouvez et vous le lâchez plus. Je dois regarder votre sac, là, monsieur. Tiens, ça te suffit, ça C'est bon, lui Ça Encore, là Il y a ses mineurs, quoi. Well, on a scale of 1 to 10 for titles of a movie that describe anything about this movie at all, I mean, I guess Sleepless Night is technically correct. It doesn't really tell you anything about the film per se yeah. uh, clubbing would have been a more appropriate title <laughs> yeah. it's, it's funny how many movies like you know can, can brag that we shot this entire thing all in one spot yeah I never thought of a nightclub as being one of those <laughs> well, a crime a crime movie that takes almost exclusively in a night to be a nightclub fair, it doesn't mm. like, take place in a nightclub it takes place in like some weird cross dimensional cluster of nightclubs all mm. squished together into well, one know, th- really insanely huge nightclub. Yeah, it's that, a that's, actually, that's actually the thing. Like, there's a club right down the street from here yeah. that has that same thing going. Where really? They, they, yeah, they, 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 it's, it's multi-leveled and there's different types of music played in different parts no of the club. No shit. Yeah, and there's, there's places in Dallas well, like I'm that. I'm not cool enough to get invited to those places <laughs> no. is what it comes <laughs> down to. But they should, you know what, they like, have a name for this and it's an action movie. It should be like The Big Bar. Would have been yeah, much better. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, you have scenes with a nightclub, th- th- then all of a sudden you're in a restaurant, and oh, then you're oh, back, and it's like back and forth, back and forth. And I'm like, wow, this must be like the most happening, exciting place to be because there's gunfights, there's like people like and like people fucking like, beating the pe- shit out of each other in pe- the kitchen and the dance floor. People scatter <laughs> the way they do in a video game. Yeah. Like they scatter for 20 seconds and they like they go, go right back to what oh, you were doing. <laughs> what just did something happen? I'm gonna go back over here. Yeah, you you know it's gotta be exciting <laughs> when a gun battle got. Happen, and people just kind of shrug and keep on yeah, drinking yeah, drinks. Yeah, Jesus, back, back to work. Yeah. Another gun battle? This place is going down hell. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you doing over there? Get back to work. <laughs> well, after uh, the, the movie Point Blank that we reviewed earlier this year. Last year. Or, was it last year? Yeah, it okay, last year. another French action movie, really tight. I was actually pretty much looking forward to sleep, Sleepless Night. And I gotta say, more ways than not, I think it kind of lived up to that same sort of feeling of a, you know, a, a French non-martial arts, because this is isn't like District 13 or something like that. Right. Just a flat out guys who are just kicking, punching, groin mm-hmm. <laughs> punching, whatever they can to get out brawling of the situation. Every brawling. Of the it, but yeah. super fast paced action film. Mm-hmm. It's funny, it's the brawling that really won me over because mm-hmm. other than that, I'm like, all right, it's a tight thriller. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, like like you watch this movie, like the the words American remake just scream at you. Oh yeah. But I mean to the point where I feel like I feel like I felt I feel like I've seen an American version of this. But when you get to the brawling, I was like, you know what? This kind of pushes it over. This makes it something more than what it just seemed like at first. Right. That as well as I think that there's a, a uh, beginning of the third act twist as far as character motivations go that I think that felt like maybe too th- that someone in Hollywood would go, nope, a Hollywood audience would never be able to grasp this this late into the movie. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, all right, so what you have here is the character Vincent, played by Tomer Sisley. No idea if I'm saying that right at all. But uh, we see him and his partner basically uh, taking down a, a drug transport car and stealing a bag. The problem is, is that uh, Tomer, or Vincent's face gets seen, because one of the guys manages to get his gun back and start shooting. Yeah. Uh, at, but, you know, they take the, the bag and they're like, okay, well... I think we'll be all right. Well, they're not because they get a phone. He gets a phone call saying, look, we got your son and you're going to bring all that, all those drugs, all that coke to the nightclub that the drug, the, 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 the drug guy who, yeah, you the, know, kingpin. the kingpin owns, you're going to bring all that shit here right now. Or we're going to kill your son. Now, French people are really fucking polite, apparently, <laughs> because in every movie I ever heard of, the drug kickpin just kills everyone and takes the drugs. There's no arrangement about yeah, right. getting the True. sun There's back. nobody waiting on the other end of a phone yeah, going, all right, is, are, are you there with my drugs yet? Because I got your little boy here. But it is, he's even nice enough about it. At times, you're like, look. I didn't want to kill this kid. Just bring me back my shit. Well, that's what's interesting about it because they don't make him just a totally blank, oh, here's this one-dimensional mob boss. I mean, yes, he's a drug lord. He's a scumbag. We know he's an asshole, but at least they make him a little human. And right. I like that. He's like, I don't want to kill a kid, <laughs> but you're leaving me to absolutely, what am I supposed to do here? I'm but, trying you know, to run a club. It's like, and the thing is, is that he owes money to another drug right. lord who's there in the club waiting for either his money or his drugs. He's like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You put me in a position. Yeah, you yeah. put me in a position. So what you've got here is the cop who's there, like, going in, trying to bring the drugs back. You've got his partner who's working for 
someone else, we don't know who, on the outside, who may or may not become involved at some point. You have a an, uh, or a internal affairs agent and his like underling yeah. who are there trying to, to catch this guy, and we know they've got some other weird shit going yeah, on. Yeah, everybody's got a secret agenda. Yeah, yeah. everybody's got a secret agenda. You, we've got the, the, you know, the guy who owns the club, the drug lord, and all his various minions running and working around the club, and you've got the people, the drug lords who are going to kill him if he doesn't get it back, yeah. and all this <laughs> inside this ridiculously huge and totally fucking packed club <laughs> and it's actually pretty fucking awesome I gotta say though my sympathies were with the guys who work in the kitchen <laughs> oh yeah oh, I mean, no, the whole I thought... time yeah the whole time that a brawl would just break out in that kitchen and you see the Swedish staff going <laughs> just like, oh man and all you just yeah you felt so bad for everyone in that kitchen because somehow or another Two of those motherfuckers are going to get involved, even though they don't want to be. They just showed up to work, you know. <laughs> and they had just the most sorrowful looks on their they face. Did. They're like, "Look, okay, we got brown skin. We don't want any trouble from the cops." Mm. First time I've seen something where play move outside, play move outside. I, I, I only speak English. Like the, the guy who speaks <laughs> English. <laughs> is, yeah. I was like, I relate to that guy. Yeah. <laughs> that, would, that would have been you, girl. Yeah, I, 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 I speak English. I'm an American. But you it's, can't it's, touch me. <laughs> it's one of those. Movies where they find clever ways to, to keep it going or keep the tension or just like but by the fact that there's so many rooms in this club you know it's times when your main character or characters are trying to get away and it seems like okay they get to this door they made it nope that opens up to another club more people <laughs> alright fine we get through this oh, now it's a pool hall full of people yeah. okay we get through this now it's a kitchen yeah. now it's a nightclub again yeah. fuck I know <laughs> How many? It's, it's like it's like oh, the place was designed by MC Escher. Like he was going upside yeah. down and sides. Well, like, club Club Labyrinth. That's just yeah. what it was called. There was a point early on, about halfway through the film, I was wondering. Well, this is interesting and all, and it's certainly well constructed. There's some astonishing cinematography and shots in here. Like, there's that one shot that goes up through the ceiling of one bathroom, yeah. across the like little weird, like I don't know how the fuck they did it, mm-hmm. crawl space, and then back down again to view, you know view another guy. I was like, wow, this is amazing. There's lots of cool shit, but still, why should I give a shit about why this guy succeeds or not? He's clearly a scumbag, right? right? Mm-hmm. Well, there is indeed a big twist coming at some point that adds a lot of dimension to that character that. For, that I there's a moment I go, is it really? and then went. You know what? Fuck it. Yeah, sure. Because yeah, you I want mean, you want somebody to root for. It's yeah, exactly. Im, it's yeah. implausible, but it's not impossible. And I, that's I, what's, what's I think that's what it was for me too. Because I I watched this movie almost in thirds because I was watching the first third and I was like, all right, you know, it's a French action thriller. All right, I, and that that I haven't really seen. I don't. I'm, I wasn't really rooting for anybody, mm-hmm. and I was starting to get sleepy. I like I flicked it yeah, off. Yeah, you're like whatever. I just saw the raid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, but, you know. And, and the thing is, Cole, that's sort of the thing. Like after seeing the raid mm-hmm. and uh, Point Blank, and even uh, get the Gringo recently, mm-hmm. it was just like, all right, here's another one of these. I just mm-hmm. wasn't even paying attention, but I, I came back again, and somewhere in that second act was where you know more revelations, and the more I'm checking out just how it's made, and I was like, wait, whoa. Now I'm completely into it. Oh yeah, and then I then I couldn't stop watching it. Yeah, there was this whole thing where it unfolds, and it's like it's like watching somebody set up like those big ads, like the the, uh, the checkers. Yeah, where you knock one down and they keep going and going, and that's kind of how this movie was. I mean, because as soon as you're like, eh, I, it looks oh, I, this is familiar. I've seen this before. But when actually somebody knocks down one of those the, those dominoes, dominoes, you you see you see the dominoes <laughs> effect going, and you're like, wow, this is pretty cool. You know? <laughs> yeah. And that's and that's how it was throughout the movie, especially when they were just. It was like it was almost like they took an idea from Family Guy, where where uh, you know, what's his name the versus the chicken versus the chicken, yeah, the chicken <laughs> fight, right, fights, the yeah. chicken fight that just goes. Goes all through the goddamn town. This is going through this entire club. I'm like, wow, this is awesome. This never stops. Okay, but, you're not, you're but, not wrong. I'm but but I, I have to admit, I am a sucker though for whenever you bring a kid. And, you know, whenever I watch these movies, like these guys that shouldn't be doing what they're doing, but they, they got to do it anyway. And one of them has to have a goddamn family. Where he's like. <laughs> That is not the smartest move, dude. You should not be doing. You should not be in this line of work if you have people that can be used against you. Well, and sure and, enough, yeah. he's like a kind of a deadbeat dad. Mm-hmm. This character, you're like, they're but like, he's his trying. Son doesn't. He's trying. His yeah. son doesn't respect him, but it's clear that like 
it's only because like his job you know which we assume is that he's a criminal mm-hmm. and that's yeah. obviously a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know he doesn't have time to be around his son and he feels mm-hmm. terrible about it but you know guys gotta make a living yeah yeah, yeah. still yeah, gotta obviously. make a living still gotta try to be a dad yeah and, yeah. and, and that was one of the things in the beginning that had me kind of like not invested because I was like mm-hmm. alright it's just the same setup as Taken mm-hmm. you know the kid looks down on him because the ex-wife is always beating him down and making mm-hmm. him look bad and won't even give him the time of day, but now he here he has to come in and save his ass. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you're right. The between all the the, the twists and everything, and even you even get some mo- all the, the the twists and everything, and even you even get some moments with the son talking to the kidnapper, which I'm like, wow, this is okay. This is something rare. Yeah, it's actually some really good scenes. Well, you get some insight into who the kid is aside from this one dimensional, right? Yeah, yeah, little yeah. bratty teenager. Even though during those scenes, I was looking at the kid like. Ixnay on the talking <laughs> yeah. This isn't helping. Yeah, I know. It's like, kid, come on now. Well, I Did your the- balls just drop? What happened? I mean, Stop. They, they use that scene pretty well, though, uh-huh. effectively, for the guy who's being like his watcher, who's, the, you know, kind of a douchebag watching me just kind of fucking with him to really get it. Like pretty painfully and be a little bitch later in the movie. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and there's a lot. That's the thing about this movie. It, it, it as uh, interesting as the twists are, and it's pretty structured little plot around a very action heavy movie. The action is extremely violent. I mean, oh, yeah. they don't fuck around when it's time for an action scene. And like I said, it's not martial arts. It's not that kind of thing. It's not gun kata or something like mm. that. It's guys who know how to fight, but know how to fight in a real world sort of feeling. It made me say, and, "Thank God." I was, I was happy. Happy for gimmickless fights right. that would just that just felt yeah. painful and real. Yeah, whenever you get in a fight, you're actually throwing dishes and shit around you at the <laughs> yeah. person that you're fighting. It's like, yeah, I've been in that fight. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, there's that one really long fight between the the IA yeah, cop the, the and the main fight. character <laughs> yeah. that's like. You're like, oh god! You don't even know what to root for because they're both so fucking ruthless. <laughs> you know? And then you got the Jesus. Swedish chef checking in on everybody. Is everybody all right over here? You guys hungry? Bork? You guys hungry? Bork? You've been fighting. <laughs> it's hilarious how, how, they would, how much they could disrupt the the kitchen, throwing shit, firing guns. Yeah. And those guys would look scared. And they would just go back to cooking. Right back to well, that's what I'm saying. Is like they kept going back to that kitchen and fucking shit up. And every time yeah. they did, those guys were just cooking. They had gone yeah. they had cleaned up. They're like, here we hey, go hey, again. Hey, times Jesus are tough, Christ. man. You gotta work. Yeah, hey, get that you, money. You, you work for a crime boss. This is, yeah. this is what comes with the territory. I know it made me because it's funny because the whole thing is that the crime boss owns like this restaurant, this whole club. And so yeah, these guys. I was like, wow, how many times has this happened in this kitchen? You know, what what else have these guys seen? How many more movies can you make of that? You know, <laughs> oh man. Uh, but yeah, you know, I have to say that this this was a, a really uh, just a fun movie to watch because I was kind of sitting there just like you, Leon, just going, "All right, you know, this better do something to impress me." But like I said, once it got going, it got going, and I was like really just I, I was really invested in it. I yeah. couldn't turn it off. The mo- pretty much the moment he enters the club, which is like towards the end of the first act, everything mm-hmm. goes into hyperdrive from mm-hmm. then on for the whole rest of the movie, and you're like. Like, oh, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's one setup after another. You're like, it's stuff that's familiar, but not identical to stuff you've seen in other films. And and the thing is, for for all that time, the guy gets, he gets so jerked around and beat up and he's exhausted. He's beating people up. Yeah, I get that sleepless night thing because it just feels like this is somebody filming the longest night of your life. Mm-hmm. Like, you take all those old movies, like, like Into the Night, and um, what was the one with Griffin Dunn where he's up all night? Uh, um, uh, uh, something shit. Hours. Something. Yeah, After Hours. After yeah. Hours. Martin Scorsese film. Yeah, yeah. It it's, has Cheech and Chong's first appearance in it. Oh, is, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought it was... Okay, I thought it was... Okay, well, their were... first film appearance, yeah. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Um, but it's it's like that only with gunplay and <laughs> your, 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 your child being kidnapped. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, it's... <sighs> There's so many neat things. There's so many little funny bits here and there, uh, but you're, they're not too. Con- they're not really invested in set pieces, which is what's interesting. Yeah, like mm-hmm. these sort of films usually revolve around big set pieces, and it's not that way at all. It's really you're wa- you're following this guy around in that sense of after hours type panic. Like, mm-hmm. what am I? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. But as one of the people we're chasing him says at one point. 
he ain't leaving here without that bag. Yeah, and exactly. He ain't leaving yeah. there without that bag. I mean, I mean, as far as you're talking about little moments that happen in this movie, the the one that struck me the most, which I'm like, okay, that's pretty fucking badass, is when he's trying. He he does that old trick of when people are looking for you and you're in a room with a bunch of people, you grab any girl you can and you force you force them to make out with you. Where I'm like, in this movie, he grabs this hot Asian chick, yes. forces her to like, all right, start making out. And then this chick just falls in love with him. Like, with well, to be fair, well, she, she, she kicks the shit out of some guy who's going to rape her. Yeah, 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 in the bathroom. And, and, and then she, he forced her to kiss. Yeah, compared yeah. to what, what was going to happen yeah, to her. Yeah, what was going to happen. I was that like, was like Fourth of July. I, was, uh, yeah. no, I, I think if I have any sadness at all is that they never came back full circle again to her. Uh, you know what? I was like, yeah. that poor girl, you just fucked up her whole night. Uh, that, you know? that, and that, weird, that girl's kind of well, fucked no, in the head. I kind of wanted to see it come back around because we know he's divorced and everything and his wife is kind of a harridan. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, I mean yeah, hey, hey, I, it's like let him hook up with the really hot yeah. Asian. He, he, yeah. he did. He, he, he did. Oh he yeah, got out of her what he needed to. Yeah, he, more than that, it, she'd have been. No, on it's him about all the time. what he put into her later. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's about. How the, it's, it's, sh- it's about the investment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he can always just go back to that club. I'm sure I she know. she'll still be there, That's waiting true. for him to come back, or, like, or any other given action star that apparently is constantly fucking up that club. I kept I kept thinking I kept thinking. Where the hell was that club 20 years ago when I did that? Somebody, the cops get called on my head. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if, if the people there were going, hmm, Jason Statham was in here last week. <laughs> <laughs> they were so nonchalant, it was like the Sims Club. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's always they were little balloons above their head, <laughs> like booze, <laughs> love. <laughs> so, what do you guys give it? Uh, you know what? This was a big surprise for me, and I went into it a little like I didn't have a lot of time, and I was like, "Shit, okay, fine, I'm going to sit and watch this, uh, and hopefully it's tolerable." And then by the end of it, I was kind of in love with it. it yeah. was like, that was a really solid French thriller. Those guys are coming back around again with yeah. doing these type of films specifically. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's a full price movie. Yeah, uh, I'm right there. It, it reminded me uh, so much of uh, Point Blank. Um, and I don't know if I liked it more or less, just about the same. But it's one of those where somebody was looking for a good you know, action movie. It would be at the top of my, uh, top of my list to say, like, hey, watch this. Oh, it's got subtitles. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You, you, you're going you're gonna to love it. Yeah. Just watch it. Yeah, full price. Oh, I'm, I'm right there with you guys. I mean, it, it is a full price. It, it is one of those like thrillers that you kind you kind of been waiting for for a long time. I mean, you brought up Point Blake, which I, I love, but you know, the, this movie is its own thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Know, which is what I love about it. So yeah, for me, it, it, it's a goddamn full price. Yeah. And, and if you don't want to rent it, you can always wait for the American remake, which yeah. is probably about six <laughs> months away. Bruce Willis. <laughs> Bruce Willis. Yeah. yeah. You know it. Yeah, you know. I can't wait for the scene where Bruce Willis forces an Asian girl to make out with him. <laughs> Her just completely loving it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's exactly why Bruce Willis is going to be in it. <laughs> screaming yippee ki <laughs> But I can't help but wonder, what would you do if your your like bar, like the Nomad or wherever else, you're sitting there and this huge fight broke out? Like, like not with guns, but dudes beating the shit out of each other, <laughs> bottles and hitting each other over the head. Would you like go out, run, screaming, or would you be like... Oh, I gotta see this. You kidding shit, me? Yeah, I, mean, I whip out that my, my cell phone. Yeah, that's, that's just going on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Après, j'asperge un fils d'essence. La seule chose qui compte dans ma vie.